Good evening and welcome to the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup here in the Superdome in Sydney, Australia. Group B, game day five action. Canada taking on Australia. Well, Shona Thorburn alongside Andrew Gaze bringing you tonight's action. Andrew, we know that Canada have already qualified, but a win tonight gets them a step closer to finishing first and not having to cross over with the top two teams in the other pool. Well, that's right. And it's uh, it's going to be a big one for both these teams. Canada got a little bit of insurance because in order for them to fall out, they had to also lose to Mali, which is highly, highly unlikely. But uh, for Australia, there's a lot to play for. They, they, they need to win their next two, and it starts with this Canada team who is undefeated so far. And they've got a lot of scoring weapons on that they have to deal with. And they're also doing without their own star in Beck Allen, who's been ruled out of the contest after suffering that injury last night. Yeah, you said it. I think who is going to step up for this Opals team? And I mean, she was averaging over 13 points a game. That's a lot of points that other players need to make up. We know, so Canada wins. They probably are more or less guaranteed a top two finish. But if Australia wins tonight, they've guaranteed a spot at least in the quarterfinals. So it's a big game for them as well. It is, and uh, it alleviates a bit of stress. stress. But as you said, it's they got the prize on a much their eyes on a much bigger prize in playing on your home court and the history they've had over the last 20 years. They're expecting and the expectations of the community here is to bring home some hardware. And in order to do that, you really do need to finish in that top two because you don't want to rely on a ping pong ball to have to go up against the United States. And because uh, as good as and as patriotic as I am towards Australia, I don't like their chances against Team USA. Well, you said it, it's a ping pong ball draw at the end of group phase, which will be tomorrow. So top two teams will cross over. Well, it will be a draw between the third and fourth teams after that. And I agree with you, as the way USA and China are playing, you do not want to play them if you are either team here tonight, Canada or Australia. You know what, I really like what uh, Australia has done in the last game was putting Mariana Tolo into the starting five. Well, it is, and it was a big change. A lot of people are calling for as we take a look at the results so far. Well, earlier today, Serbia over Mali and France with that win over Japan guarantees them their ticket to the quarterfinals. We will take a quick break for the national anthems. Oh no, excuse me. We have the standings. France, so there you see it, they're in first right now, but they are one game played ahead of Canada. Canada 3-0, Serbia now 2-2. Two and two. Australia looking for that second win here in Group B. If they can get it tonight, we know that they are going to move on to the quarterfinals. So it is a very, very important game for Australia. Canada with a win could almost guarantee them a top two finish and not having to cross over. And we'll take a quick break for the national anthems. And the national anthem of Australia.
Gotta love the national anthems. And now the gift exchange that normally happens. Uh, the coaches and the players exchanging smiles, handshakes, and gifts for now. Yeah, I don't know how sincere they are with their <laughs> warmth. Uh, it's always played in good spirits, but uh, when you're about to play a game with so much at stake, it's, uh, it's usually not all that friendly. Well, referees Anaya Friela from Panama, Liska from Poland, and Burns will be calling the game from the USA. So the third team on the court. And now we will take a look at the starting lineups for Australia. So Wickham, no surprise, uh, starting for uh, Australia along with Talbot, Tolo, George. So it's Blitzavs is getting the start over Beck Allen. Well, that's right. And Steph Tal Talbot was huge last night in that win over Serbia, had her best game in the tournament. That surprises me a little bit with the decisions they're making. I thought they'd go perhaps with another guard with Christy Wallace coming in to give them that little bit more defensive punch, but I guess she's trying to go a little bit more like for like. Blickavs doesn't have the same offensive firepower, but certainly the work she can do on the, the defensive end and on the glass uh, can replicate some of what Beck Allen can deliver. Well, I believe coach Sandy Brondello knows what she's talking about, and maybe it's more the length defensively. That's why she went with Blitzavs. So let's take a look at the starting lineups for Canada. Nurse Carlton, Achanwa, Kali, and Alexander. And that's the starting lineup that he has gone to the three previous games in this competition. So not a big surprise there. It isn't. And uh, although that's their starters, it's not really, when you look at the minutes played, he does mix it up a little bit. Naira Fields is averaging 27 minutes a game and, and actually leading the team in scoring. And she's the super sub coming off the bench. I was questioning Michelle Timms, the legend Australian, as to why that was the case. And she said she's actually on minutes limit limitations, but she's playing 27 minutes. So it's not limiting too much. And that's because she's coming off a, an ACL uh, injury. Yeah, so uh, Coach Victor Lepena, uh, excuse me, obviously coming off that injury for Kia Nurse. I do know that she is on a minutes limit. She says she feels great though, and she's ready to go. And she wants to play more. Well, that's right. And all those options are there for her. And Sandy Brondello, she's had seen the best winning silver medals. And of course, when she was a player, was constantly winning medals at the World Cup and Olympic Games. And bitterly disappointed at what took place 12 months ago in Tokyo. And the thing about this, you, you talk about a bit of spite. 12 months ago, it was Australia that actually eliminated Canada from the quarterfinals at Tokyo. They needed to beat Puerto Rico by 25 or more in the last game. Lose, if they only beat, beat them by less, Canada was into the quarterfinals. Instead, Australia got the win, and ta-da, Canada, they're watching it on TV. And what about Mariana Tolo in that game? Do you remember um, the performance that she put up? And, and really, Australia didn't have a lot of standout performances the entire tournament, but she was one. And again, she's been getting given the reward of earning back the starting spot. 33 years of age, just a classy veteran that knows her role. And earning back the starting spot, 33 years of age, just a classy veteran that knows her role and is not is going to be productive to the others hit the glass play some d and is good enough on the offensive end on a night can put up some numbers as well and who's here for australia good evening and welcome to the fiba women's basketball world cup here in sydney australia the home team australia taking on canada Shona Thorburn alongside Andrew Gaze bringing you tonight's action. And a quick shot by Kayla George is good. Good start for Kayla George. And she's one that's been the leading rebounder for Australia during, during the tournament. And she's, all, she's inside, outside as well. Nurse now, you said it, playing well for them in limited minutes. And good defense there by Blitzavs as Nurse has nowhere to go. Kicks it out to Carlton. Back to Nurse, she has to put it up. It's a deep three off the front of the iron. Well, Cauley there got hit pretty hard. And how about that, Sammy Whitcomb for three. 
Well, that's why I thought that they might go with Wallace in the starting spot to get Wickham in that two spot because she can fill it up. Great offensive threat. She can put some ball points on the board, which they're going to need without having Beck Allen. Carlton, who shot the ball great yesterday, is off to a hot start here as well. 19 points in that one yesterday. She was outstanding. Whitcomb, she's already hit one for them. Finds Tolo rolling oh. to the basket. Great job, nice passing there from Australia. And a real breakdown by Canada on the defensive end. They hard show on the on ball and no one there to help with the roller. And this is the advantage of Australia going with a tall lineup. George and Blitzavs were able to switch. A Chonwa's shot is off the mark as Australia is now pushing it. Talbot. Same situation, yeah. just two different players. Well, Tolo's the same player, but great job. And again, struggle with the on ball. Yeah, La Pena, he'd be doing his head in. If you get beat once, the last thing you want to do is beat this exactly the same way the very next possession. And there's some poor defense by Wickham. Coley just blows by her the easy two. But if get back into these on balls and see if they can solve the problem. So I believe that foul is going to go against Achanwa. And that was the first pick and roll action yeah. with Tolo. And then this is the second action, Talbot to Tolo. That's right. Exact same play, different guards. And if you're going to switch, if you're out on the ball, you've got to get underneath and try and get into the legs of the roller. That was way too easy. And this time defended a little bit better by Canada as George puts a tough shot up. Alexander with the rebound. Nurse dribbles all the way down. No one stopped her, but Achamwa there to pick up the rebound. They go inside to Alexander, who really maybe should have made a yeah. dribble post move. Blitzav's got caught behind. She was calling out for the help with a mismatch, but just held her ground. So Wickham to George. We know she can shoot from out there, but that one's off the top of the rim. Carlton wanting a screen from Alexander. She drives hard, nice defense by Talbot. Gets her own rebound, I guess you could say. As shot clock's winding down, they need to throw oh. it up, and they can't. So great defense yeah. by Australia. Well, we saw that in the game against Serbia last night. It was almost, it was incredible. It was six times, I think it was, they got called. Serbia got called for a 24-second violation. And again, they come up with a great defensive stop. And Steph Talbot has been sensational on the defensive end. She had the tough assignment last night against Yvonne Anderson, who had 14 points in the first half, and she locked her up in the second and held it at two. Wickham, open at three, not someone you want to leave open. Her shot rolls in and out. They bring a little bit more shooting. Blitzavs goes out, Madgen comes in. Well, Kali, you said it. She's been playing well this tournament, and her first shot is good. Her second shot, sorry. She had that drive to the basket. They go inside to Talbot. Well defended by Carlton. Really well. And Carlton has got that nice shot stroke action and showed a bit on the defensive end that time. Emmy here. Little elbow jump shot is good. Well, Definitely is known as a driver, and you I, obviously they've scouted, yeah. so George knows yeah. that, and you saw her take a step off as soon as she caught the ball. Well, just take a step off, but I, I still think you've got to carry a hand. Imagine backdoor cuts, a turnover. Carlton to Amy here. 
Fields has it, but the shot clock's winding down. She's going to have to create and talk about a pull-up jump shot. Oh, that is just a beautiful shooting stroke that you see. And how's the stop? Imagine slipped a little on the decal. And I'm not sure that matchup, if I think we might need to, I shouldn't say we, but <laughs> Steph Talbot, I reckon she's more the one that should be guarding Fields with that length. Sammy Whipcomb with the hesitation. Nice hands by Collie. It's hard. You sort of pick your poison because you see what Carlton's been able to do. But he's imagine trying to guard it and just got that little slat step. And that is just textbook shooting technique. It's the change of pace yeah. from Naira Fields. She looks like she's going and she can stop on a dime and so go quickly. straight up. Yep. And keep the control. Some players try to do that and they've, the hands and legs are going all over the place. Tolo guarded by Alexander. Shot clock winding down. It's off the mark. Canada with a chance to run. Fields drives aggressive off the glass. And a fight for the board. And it's going to be a jump ball. They, they did make that change. They did put Steph Talbot onto Fields. And the legend checking in for Tolo, Lauren Jackson who has been more than serviceable for someone who's been the last six or seven years having babies and getting knee reconstructions. <laughs> she has been a real handy addition. Close to a five-second call. It is a five-second call. And you see Coach LaPena, he's not too happy there. He says, come on, you knew it was counting down. Throw it off the legs of the defender. Or anything, and it was... Really poor execution by Canada. Their screens, they were just going through the motions in that inbound bounce, just taken for granted they'll be able to get it there. Good D by for Australia. Look oh. at this defense by Amy here, though, and she goes all the way. Well, Australia now cooled off a little bit from the start of the game as they looked very good. And now Canada doing a better job. And look at the hustle by the veteran, Lauren Jackson. Well, that's right. And it's, you know, the, the, the Canada's stats, when you look at them offensively, they, they don't jump off the page. They're seventh in scoring, field goal percentage, two-point percentage. But what they are is number one in defense. Only averaging 53 points against Canada. And you can spin on display the last few possessions. That's a travel. Yep, you said it. That's a travel. And if I'm not... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't want to age you, Andrew, <laughs> no, have you not played in an Olympics where Lauren Jackson also played? Oh, I, well, back, <laughs> back in 2000, I played in a couple. 96, <laughs> I think she was there as a youngster. And she was 18 at that time, right? Yep, or, yeah, and, and 17, started 18. The, the journey. So, <laughs> and, and saw and watched her. Very good friends with Lauren. Carlton. Kicks it to Nurse. And tough, tough shot by Nurse. That was a good defensive possession there by Madgen on Nurse. It was. And look at this. Wallace comes up with the ball. As he running the floor. And Magbegor is not able to score, but she can draw the foul. She did, and she's an elite athlete. She gets in, up and down the floor and continually runs the floor. She doesn't always get rewarded. But you know what it's like when you're telling those bigs, keep running and eventually it'll come. And you've got to run 10, 15 times to pick it up two or three. But if you don't run those 10 or 15 times, you don't get it. So that time she gets the reward and goes to the basket, gets fouled, shoot a couple of free throws. Well, with those two free throws, Australia now trailing by three. And good job there by Talbot. You talked about it. She's long. She can defend. She can move her feet, mm -hmm. I think, quicker than a lot of people give her credit for. Absolutely. And she's smart. Yeah. She knows how to read the defense. She knows where she's going to influence them and send them. Another tough defender is definitely Wallace. Number three for Australia. And you said it, she's smart. But oh. Naira Fields, what a shot 
from her. And a great start for Naira Field coming in off the bench. Talbot is blocked by Alexander. Amy here pushing it for Canada, gets it to Nurse in transition, and her three-point shot is good. Well, they take the least amount of threes per game than in any other team, but here this, this evening, they've been super efficient from there. There's the block, it generates the transition, and Nurse just steps into it. And they're four of six from the land of plenty. 67%. What do you think of that timeout? Well, it was much needed. Need to snap this momentum that Canada has got. And the focus there is on the defensive end and the level of urgency and desperation. And I think we saw that in fields. We saw Wallace up and in. And then it was almost like, well, once now that in their half court set, I'll retreat. Got to keep that pressure on fields the entire time. She's coming off and just steps into a three. And then, of course, in the defensive transition, you uh, th just not seeing the, the urgency and Nurse just steps into a three, another three. La Pena getting a bit of a speaking to from the officials. At least they've given him a warning. So now he knows what they're looking for and what he can't do. Well, I don't know whether it was an official warning, but it was certainly a some advice. And Amy here with another steal. She goes all the way, but what a block by Ezzy Magbigor. And it was last touched by Amy here, I believe. Let's take a look at this. Great defense by her, but the hustle to get back by Ezzy. There was a lot of contacts from behind. Annalie Maley checking in early. She's... Hasn't played in all games, but she will provide the spark on the defensive end, and it, she is a rebounding fool. And you said it, someone needs to step up because we know that Beck Allen is out and not playing today. Jackson, three-point shot is good. <laughs> and much needed as well. Yeah, not a great offensive play, but... <laughs> no, no, it was a, it was a, a broken play. Nurse stop pops. And how about that? Magbagora takes it all herself, but just can't finish. And Wallace comes up with the offensive rebound. That timeout, you talked about desperation. You can see the urgency really stepping into the Opals game. Wallace stop pops. No good. Alexander there is going to be fouled by Maley. And that's only going to be their first foul of the quarter. Almost have to check that, which is a little unusual when you've only got a minute to play. Here's Lauren. Nice kick out pass by Wallace. And the veteran knocks it down. And we know that now Lauren Jackson has become the third leading scorer all time wow. at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. It was actually called FIBA World Championships back when she started playing <laughs> in these events for the Opals. Fields. 
Tough shot, well defended by Wallace. And hustle for the jump ball is going to go Canada. And you look at this lineup on the floor that Australia's got on, and, and you keep asking yourself, where, where are the points going to come from? You got LJ, Lauren Jackson, who can we've just seen can knock down the three. But outside of that, you don't have a lot of perimeter threats. Fields almost comes up with the turnover. And now Wallace wants to use the clock a little bit, I imagine. Well, we have a mismatch, Kali Blitzavs. Amy here, just a little bit too aggressive defensively, fouls Ezzy. But that's only Canada's third team foul. Jackson to Wallace. Wallace finds a rolling Jackson, somehow gets the shot off, can't finish. Now 10 seconds, Canada on the run. Fields, passes to Colley, Colley lets it fly, and it's good off the backboard. Well, that was good get back defense, but not quite good enough as Colley knocks down a three at the buzzer. And Australia trailing Canada. 23 to 14. Pretty sure she didn't call bank on that one, Collie, but <laughs> just let it fly and, and got the lucky kiss off the glass. And after a pretty impressive start by the Opals, their scoring really faded. Only 5 of 15 from the field, 33% in contrast. 9 of 18, 50%, which is really good shooting and even better from the three-point line. 5 of 7 for Canada. And that's how we all got underway there with George. Got the Opals going. And it was after about the first three or four minutes, Canada really started to to take control and I don't know about you Shona but this has got a, a lot more of an Australia v France look than a, an Australia v Serbia look that we saw last night and a lot of it's just scoring sometimes it's that old adage that we've heard time and time again that Operation Successful Patient dies sometimes they get it through some hands they get to the rim and they just can't put the ball in the hole and uh, notwithstanding some bad turnovers that led to some difficult defensive situations had four in the quarter which is a couple too many at least and I know Sandy after their game against Serbia which was yesterday they really needed to win that game and they did 69-54 over a tough Serbia team for me it was defensively Australia just buckled down and they did everything coach Bondello asked and I know in the press conference after the game she said, you know, we want to be known as a tough defensive team. Well, 23 points after 10 minutes of play <laughs> for Canada. Message is not getting across to the players. It's not just the points, it's the efficiency as well. 50% from the field. Second quarter action underway here. Canada running their offense and great little fake baseline as Fields not able to finish, gets her rebound, and she doesn't miss two in a row. And that's Tolbert. She flew by to contest that first one and wasn't able to get back in front of Fields. And real danger time right now for the Opals. Almost another turnover. But a foul is going to go against... Shay Colley. Yeah, and you, you, you're always looking at the numbers and Canada on the, on the tournament, their first three games averaging 65 points and to give up this many at this stage, signs aren't great. The pick and roll worked in the first quarter and it's working here early in the second as Talbot again finds Tolo ro rolling to the basket, not able to score, but will go to the free throw line. That's right. And they've had this, these problems the entire way. They're trying to fight over the top and that time way too 
open and too much separation. And when you're going over the top and there's the roll there and the big comes out to help, you need the third man rotation or else it's just a matter of whether you can make the pass. Tolo goes two for two from the free throw line. Talbot with the tall task of trying to guard Fields. But it's not just about guarding Fields. Colley's had a great game so far. Amy here drives left to the, left to the basket and she's fouled. Yeah, good drive that time all the way to the rim and Tolo doing her best to slide in front and good screen also coming on the low post there to create that driving lane. Almost like a set play that they see Tolo out there and want to test her lateral movement. Alexander just shield her any of the help that could come. So Emmy here goes one of two. Yeah, you said it. I think Emmy here is excellent at driving, you know, kind of that elbow line, just, just inside the three-point line. Very quick and aggressive. Sweep and drive straight to the basket. Whitcomb inside to Tolo. Tolo uses her body to protect the shot, not able to score. And unfortunately, she falls out of bounds, but it's going to be Australia ball. George to Blitzavs. Backside to Droid and another turnover. And Emmy here, she's sprinting as she takes it all the way. Nice hands by Whitcomb. And Alexander picks up the rubbish but can't finish, gets it back. Blocked by Tolo. And now a foul is gonna go against Alexander, I believe. And I think Alexander's a little lucky there. Tolbert looked like she ball got held up in her hand and fell to the floor and got the benefit of the doubt. Tolo. Oh dear. Well, she was trying to get the defender off her, and she certainly did. Unfortunately, I think she lowered her shoulder. Amy Hare took it to the chest, maybe exaggerated it a little bit, but it's good defense. Look at this. When you lower the shoulder yeah. and you bump a little, it's an easy call for the referees. Spot on. And that's where you just got to keep your arms up and do that same pivot without, like you say, dropping that shoulder. Definitely a little mayo on it, though. Well, Sammy Whitcomb gets it back, and now ball back to Australia. So I have seen the intensity defensively pick up a little yeah. bit here for the Opals. No, it had to, and both these teams right up and in, and that time Whitcomb gets rewarded for the effort with the turnover. Blitz halves. shot clock. She drives, takes it all the way. Can't finish, George with the offensive rebound, finds Talbot to Whitcomb, Whitcomb. Off the mark and Achamwa flies in for the defensive board. Well, the ability to put the ball in the hole is starting to become a real problem. Like that's a good look for Wickham. Great look. She's there and she's already knocked down one already earlier on, but they're now five of 18, 28%. Good hustle by Wickavs and George. Blitzavs, excuse me, and George. And there's just a little reach in. Sammy Hill checking into the game for Canada. Canada basically used only nine players throughout the course of the tournament. So they get really well-established roles. Erzy says, not in my house. <laughs> Great timing 
And I mean, look at this. She almost hit that ball into the first row of fans. It's like a volleyball spike. Wow, the elevation. The athleticism. <laughs> That is going to be on a high right, highlight reel. Darcy Garden checking in. Carlton open, shot fakes. Step back, three-point shot, no good. Well, Canada has cooled off a little from the outside shots, and Talbot just can't control the dribble. So Carlton comes up with the steal. Nice pass. Nowhere to go though, Carlton gets it back, finds Hill to Chanwa. Hesitated a little bit, but it's good. It wasn't as smooth as they liked, but once they kicked it out and Australia got into the rotations, they did a good job of finding the wide open man, the person for the free throw. For three! And that's needed. She struggled in the first couple of games from the perimeter with her shooting and got it going against Serbia, and they're going to need that without Beck Allen. We keep saying this, but without her, she's a, a pivotal part of what Australia does on the offensive end. Here's that drive by Amy here. Wallace finds Ezzy. Ezzy is blocked from behind by Naira Fields, though. And a great job by one of the best defenders that Australia has, Steph Talbot. Absolutely. She is elite. She reads it well. She plays with a high basketball IQ and is a tremendous athlete. But this is good athleticism as well, coming from behind. Just a little touch on the ball. And Ezzy was not expecting that. And down the other end, Fields just a little out of control. One of those semi-transition fast break opportunities. Had numbers. Spread the floor. Find the open person. Well, Canada still up nine. Six minutes left in the second quarter. Wallace, back door. She lets it go. Can't knock it down. Alexander with the tough rebound. It's times like this when you're struggling so much in the half court that really puts a bit more emphasis on the transition. Deep three pot shot from Carlton. Offensive rebound is Alexander. And we've said it all tournament long. The refs are letting them play. These are the ones I'm talking about. Sort of a semi-transition there. Instead, we've got an offensive foul and Garvin down low. So Darcy Garvin. Oh my. Fields. Fever basketball has done a fantastic <laughs> job of limiting the flopping that's going on. And that right there was as good a flop as you'll ever want to see. And it's good because it got the desired outcome camouflaged enough that had the ref guessing. And so let's take a listen in on uh, Victor Le Pena's timeout with Canada. Because he's just going to pass and shoot. We are playing amazing to hear way for one. You are all the time, you are all the time changing the set. I call horse and you come here. I call, I call one, two, three, and you play five, six, or seven. So we don't have space. Can you run the sets? Normal, you have a space, you know you don't have uh, happen, but sad, but sad, but transition deep. Play for, complete, did not, I want not in the pick and roll, boom, okay, it's clear. The Pena there, he's a little upset that they're not listening to the instructions. And the reason he's upset is because it's the spacing on the floor. He sees something on the sidelines and a bit disappointed that the players aren't executing what he'd like to see. So just wanted to let the girls know, because although he's got a nice little, nice little lead here, 
really a chance to break things open now that Australia just inability to score. I agree with you. I think they've done a much better job defensively, but they can't find scores. And that's what I think you really see how big of a player Beck Allen is. Well, Sammy Whipcomb, welcome to the World Cup. Her first basket at a FIBA Basketball World Cup this year. It is, and Australia went to a 2-3 zone that time, and the ultimate zone bust up. Wallace drives baseline, finds Garbin. Carlton. Been rather slow after she knocked down her first three-point attempt. Colley with the big first quarter. Shots off, though. And Talbot, strong defensive rebound. Mm. And good defense by Achanwa. Picks off the steal. She's going to slow things down. Wallace inadvertently hit Achamwa in the face, I believe, and the two of them <laughs> exchanging a little bit of words. What do you think they were saying to each other? Well, I don't think she appreciated the little clip, and it was inadvertent. It wasn't certainly no malice. As Wallace checks out of the game, the turnover's becoming a real issue. <laughs> well, you translate better than me. I can't lip read. You let me know what they'll say. What I like is how Sammy Hill kind of got in between the two of them. Yeah. To be like, okay, come on, Nat. We got to move away from this situation. Well, the physical nature of the defense that Canada is applying right now is causing Australia all sorts of problems. They can't get into any of their sets and their action, and any sort of freedom of movement in the half court is really hard for them. And off the bounce, they're getting trapped and turning it over. As he rolling to the basket, nice footwork, just splits the defense and two more points for her. The whole game, that, that strength is being that middle pick and roll. Nice hands by Talbot. Magbigor, extra pass to Madgen, the captain, and her three point shot is good. So a great 5-0 run here for Australia. Good extra pass by Garvin, who saw Imagine wide open. Garvin in herself, she's 39% three-point shooter for the past season with the Perth Lynx. Kali, not sure she's aware of the time. Doesn't matter because it's a shot clock violation. So another great defensive stop by Australia. And now you feel the momentum shift. They've cut it back down to nine. There's that extra pass we we're talking about, but just get to middle on balls for the time being. It's been the strength and if nothing from then play out of it from there, but keep going to that until Canada come up with a better solution. Well, Emmy here almost coming up with another t uh, steal in that same position. Whitcomb, three-point shot is off. She knocks down her first in the game, has missed. You talked about the three-point shooting of Garbin, and she heard you, Andrew. <laughs> when her feet are set, she's as, as good as any, and that time wide open, and you just, she's one of those players, when she shoots a three when she's open, you're more surprised when she misses than when she makes. Well, yeah, you said it. She had an excellent season. Okay. 
improving defense, especially in defense. Right? Andrew, I saw you laughing there. I love do it. You, do you agree with uh, Coach Lopena? Problem is simple. <laughs> well, not always. In his eyes, when you're sitting on the sideline, it's easy what you're seeing. And I think he, he, he's concerned about both ends of the floor. And it seems like that time he sent out the instructions. He wanted more switching, and the switching didn't come. So he was upset. And same as what we said, what he heard in the timeout before on the offensive end. <laughs> not getting the love from his players on the calls that he wants at both ends of the floor. It comes down to he wants his players to play as a team, not individually on the offensive and defensive end. So let's see if they can do what he asks. Again, good defense by the Opals. Shot clock's winding down. Fields. Gets it to Amy here. Amy here, nowhere to go, but unfortunately, I think that foul is going to go against. Oh, sorry, I thought it was going to be uh, Ezzy Magbigor coming from behind, but no, it's going against Darbin. Yeah, just perhaps not sliding her feet quick enough, I guess. And it is tough when the games throughout this tournament, and you coach in France and I watch the WNBL and a bit of the WNBA. Uh, I, I've never seen a, a competition recently that's allowed this level of physicality, which we've seen in this tournament. Would that be fair to say? 100% I agree with you. Which is okay, but it, it, it does take a bit of adjusting by the players. And it also, I think, is an explanation for, in general, the shooting percentages are, are, are down. Well, a bit of adjustment. It is the fourth game in five days for both these teams. So I think they've had their games to adjust. Nice backdoor cut by Ezzy, and it's good. Great pass by Talbot. And how about this? You actually have Talbot running the point guard over Whitcomb and Madgen. She's capable of doing that. She can handle it well. It's not obviously her primary role on the floor, but she's more than capable. And that size, she can pass over the defenders. He's tough. Very tough. She really does stop on a dime. But that short, short. That shot, short. Magbegor, nice little step through and finish by her. And she has really started to step up her game in this second quarter. Well, she's up to 11 now. And when they really were struggling to find a score, they found one in Magbegor. Collie, tough take. And now Australia with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Garbin is fouled by Achanwa. Just the energy that Magbagor has brought as well. There you see the overplay and good read. Now see, if, if that is Imagine up the top, it's hard to make that pass on that back cut because the defense's hands are there, but with Talbot out the top, she's able to throw it over the top for the easy two on the back cut. And Garvin knocks the first down. And that one rolls in. So that's the first time that the game has been tied since around the oh. five minute mark and they could take the lead. Kicks it out, Madgen, her three point shot is good. And what a run here late in this quarter by Australia. Enormous and remember that time out we heard Lapanya going off with our 11 up. You understand why? Because he, he sensed that things weren't quite right for Canada. Shot clock. Nurse needs to create. Is she aware? I don't know if she is. And another great possession by Australia. Outstanding. And wasn't a lot 
of movement and action going on for Canada as well. And the Opals want to have a chat about it. They want to hold this for the last shot. There's only 0.1 of a second difference. So it's basically a last possession situation for the Opals. Well, I want to know what Coach Brondello is going to drop as well. So let's listen in. And that was the big three by the captain, Tess Madgen from Australia, that gave them their first lead since around five minutes in the first quarter. Well, it's all about the deep. Held Canada to only 10 points after a 23-point first quarter, 22. So basically flipped the scenarios in this second term. Imagine she needs to get it over. She does to Talbot. And you see Brondello in the background saying, calm down. Lots of time. Ezzy rolling, finishing. And goodness me, what a half Ezzy Magbegor has had here. Well, Andrew, I was worried, but boy, have I seen a different Australian Opals team in the second quarter as they are now leading Canada 33 to 38. And you said it, it starts on defense, but offensively they started knocking down shots. Well, that's right, and uh, don't underestimate what Izzy Magbubal brought to the table with the 10 points and the energy on the defensive end, those hard shows. you got that athlete with the long uh, reach making it tough to pass out of the double teams and the shooting percentages started to pick up. They were in the mid-20s for a lot of that first half and they ended up with 43%. And on the flip side of that, we saw the spectacular shooting by Canada and they're all the way down to 38% from the field. And it's uh, the way in which the ball started to move around and they did not find the solution for that middle on-ball screen at uh, Canada. Uh, very little weak side help. And as such, even when you saw it on that last play, they had a bit of misdirection before they went to it. But when Wickham and Ezzy in that on-ball screen, Wickham good enough to be able to thread the needle and for an easy, easy two for Magbegor. Well, Andrew, I think a big stat to me that pops out is actually the assists. And I bring that up because Australia has 12 to 6 mm. compared to 6 for Canada. And during one of those timeouts by Coach Le Pena, he specifically said, you're not playing as a team offensively or defensively. And I think assists is a very good indicator of if you're playing team basketball or not. 100%. And it's also an indicator of if the ball's moving. Because a lot of the times it's coming off the bounce and individually they're trying to go for the pull-ups or get all the way to the rim and not making the extra pass for the assists. And we talk about Australia's turnover problem. Well, in the last three or four minutes of that second quarter, Canada were able to cough it up a few times. In that category, it's nine apiece, which is a little high, but still it generated some baskets. And here's one of those turnovers that we saw that leads to an indefensible situation. And... As we said earlier on, there are turnovers and then there are really, really bad turnovers. And that was a really, really bad one. Early on, it was the three-point shooting. And you look at their numbers, it's six of 11 in that area. But once Australia started to tighten up and take away those uh, uncontested threes, it, uh, it got 
created a whole lot of problems. And when your defense is struggling, you can't keep people in front. It's good to have a, a rim protector like Ezzy Magdebor, who did a fantastic job just being an intimidating. Didn't always get the block, but just her presence around the basket really helped out. And my, does the game look a whole lot better and easier when you see the ball start to go in the hoop, which wasn't all that easy from a lot of that first half for Australia. Well, a lot of highlights from that first half. The first quarter, it was all Canada. The second quarter, it was all Australia. Don't go away because we have a good one. Australia up five over Canada. We'll be right back in a few moments. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands? It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. That would have been a travel. She popped past herself almost, no, because she left her feet. Burkany with a deep three point shot. Anderson back door. Couple dribbles, open look. No block. Back Allen. Great hands for the Opal. And Williams with the crossover, and she goes all the way to the basket. She's incredible. The way she oh. taught her body, and uh, did she hurt herself a little bit there? Canada up three, and nice pass. And talk about breaking the uh, press break. That was almost textbook. And uh, that's right, and, and that sends a message. If you're going to try and do that, and right now, the Physical nature's sending a straight well, causing fouls. There is a beautiful drive and finish by Whitcomb in traffic. Sammy Whitcomb, she's been good at. Canada with another opportunity, 14 seconds. Let's see if they can get something a little better. Carlton spin move, that's a tough shot, but it's good. Intercepted, Chajo there, and the three! Chajo doing everything for Serbia right now. And Okoya tries to take it, but Ami here says, not in my house, folks. Nice little turnover here. Defense feeding offense for the Opals. No look pass. George on the block, waiting for it. And it counts. Australia feeling themselves. Sammy Wickham with the no look up. Gets it to George for the easy two. 10 seconds left. They get it to Williams. Williams floater is good. That's pretty. That's so pretty. I love it, Gabby Williams. She says, give it to me. Don't worry, France. I got this. I'll put you on my back. And boy, does she finish with the time.
Welcome back, and what a game we have for you. Australia with an enormous second quarter to leave Canada at halftime, 33 to 38. And it really was all Canada the first 10 minutes and then all Australia. And a big part of it is that woman right there, Ezzy Magbegor. She had a great first half. It does, and she's such an elite athlete. She runs the floor. You see the way she's diving on those on-ball screens, just pace and really good hands and finishes it around the basket really well. And Canada, well, they, they, they came out white hot at the start, particularly from the three-point line, but it was being Shea Coley. And they really spread it around with their scoring throughout the tournament so far. But as you can see, she's averaging a little over 10 points a game, and she's at eight already tonight. And But they've had a, been able to, like I say, share it around. They've done their scoring on the offensive end by committee more than anything. And they're going to need a whole lot more of that in the second half. You know, we just highlighted Shea Colley, and I believe all of her eight points, or at least seven of them, maybe came in the first quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, she the, certainly The majority started, of them correct. came. Correct. And uh, scoring became really tough in that second quarter. Only 10 points in the quarter. Like I said, they're, they're one of the lowest scoring teams on average throughout the course of the tournament so far. Only averaging 65 points a game. That's good enough to be seventh in the competition. And they've really done a really good job in their first three games on the defensive end. They've still got one game to go against Mali, but Mali is the... And I say this... Well, this is a disrespectful comment. I don't know how to <laughs> say it, but they, they are kind of the gimme so far when you're talking about how tight this group is and how talented it is. They are a, a step away from the level of the other five teams in in this group. And I don't think it's disrespectful. You, they came here late. It was supposed to be Nigeria. Federation doesn't have as much money for, for preparations, games, travel, exhibition. And I've done a lot of Mali games, and every game they have played, they have improved, and they have generally a young team. So I really think this is a great opportunity for Mali, Mali's Federation, their young players, to improve and know what they need to work on with the opportunity to play at this kind of level and competition. It is, and it's a shame that Nigeria weren't able to come, because I've, I've watched them over the years, and, and they have some genuine talent. They're really athletic, and it's a, a real shame that the government there weren't able to see their way clear after they'd done the hard yards and qualified. But So it's going to be an interesting round of games tomorrow as well, a lot to, to be determined in Australia. They also need to be conscious of the uh, the margin as well. There we see Steph Tolbert with the three points, but look at how she's contributing in other areas. The five boards, the six assists, and what you also don't see is the way in which she's defended. She sets the tone on the defensive end with the way she can get up and in and be really active with her hands and can guard really one through four. Yep. One through four, Steph Talbot. So when she's on the floor and she's coming out and she's hard showing or she's running over picks trying to get skinny, she can do it all. And Steph Talbot's only credited with one steal. But that one steal, do you know how many balls she has ref uh, deflected? Mm. And either it's a steal for her teammates or the ball goes out of bounds. We don't have deflections on a stat sheet. That's right. She has definitely changed the game on the defensive end for Australia. Well, well we saw Colley there with the eight points, fields to assist, Alexander, the rebounding machine. And she's done a great job for Canada rebounding so far in this tournament for them. Averaging double figures in rebounds. I tell you the other one that really stepped up for Australia was Darcy Garvin, who came in and gave him a real spark. Hit that three ball, but uh, was active. And we have these plus minuses on the stat sheet, and, and I don't always put a whole lot of faith in them. I reckon plus minuses of fives rather than plus minuses of individuals are generally more re reflective of how in which you're going to read into those those stats. But her time on the floor was was really valuable. And she was 
leads that category in the plus minuses. When she was on the floor, Darcy Garvin, Opals plus 15. Well, you saw it, plus 15. So clearly, even if statistically doesn't really show up what she's doing, we saw her knock down that three. She's efficient and the team plays better when she's on the floor. Well, that's right. And it's uh, a long, long way from over this game here. There's been a lot of ebbs and flows. Can the Opals take that momentum they generated in the latter stages of that second quarter into the second half? And can we, or can we see Canada come out and light it up like they did in that first quarter? Well, what I like is that going into this game, Australia wanted to be known more as a defensive team. I was worried that first quarter, but if I think if they can continue to play defense like they did in the second quarter, clearly their defense and good defense leads them to better offense and better shots on the offensive end as well. And I think that's why they also knock down more shots in that second quarter. Oh, for sure. And what they do do, Australia, is that they're, they're number one in the, the, comp in the tournament in, in rebounding. And they, George is the leading rebounder by seven. We talk about how Canada has scored in that first half by committee. That's what the Opals do. And that's where Steph Talbot comes in and they're playing that three spot. But still goes about and, and, and is that extra rebounder on the glass using her athleticism and of course Ezzy when she's out there what she's capable of she just extraordinary athleticism well I think that halftime break came at a good time for Canada and hope coach Victor Le Pena was able to get his points across because we need to see the kind of Canada team that played in the first quarter as opposed to the second quarter here tonight. If they want to win and more or less secure themselves a top two finish in this group. Welcome back, half time action here. Australia with a big comeback. They're on top of Canada as unfortunately a miscommunication there between Ezzy and Blitzavs and the ball goes out of bounds. Shona Thorburn alongside the Australian great Andrew Gaze. <laughs> I appreciate that. So Canada, good defensive possession. Mentioned it, Australia, good defense led to great offense for them. Penetration, Blitzavs almost comes up with the steal, but it's going to stay Canada ball. I just want to remind people, if you are just tuning in now, if Australia win this game, they're guaranteed a quarterfinal spot. Well, nice backdoor pass there is Carlton finishing. And I like the way they recognized what Australia were doing at the tail end of that quarter with the, all the overplays. So they came out with a good first half set with a nice back cut for a cheap one. Wickham. Inside to Ezzy, and three Canadians crowd her, and it's gonna be a jump ball, so Canada ball. Yeah, look at that. It Great is. Great pass from Achamwa. It is, it's a really good connection between the passer and the receiver. Carlton, she likes that spot and rolls out Alexander for the offensive board. No good. And that's what I'm talking about with Talbot. Gets in there, prepared to mix it up with some of the taller timber. Gee, that was a wild pass by Whitcomb. It was... I think she really wanted to hit Tolo rolling. Yeah. Carlton it was, it was that, it went straight to it. So it's such a surprise. She snatched at it and Got the deflection, straight to maintain possession. Talbot. Oh dear. Took one on the chin, Tolo goes up, falls oh over goodness. in Chanwa, and it's getting chippy here. No surprise, both these teams know what's on the line if they win here tonight. 
in the Sydney Superdome. A reach in foul is going to be called. Yep. That's a blatantly obvious one by Blitzarves. Carlton. Alexander. And her little hook shot in the key is good. And I love the off-ball movement by Carlton. Just weaving away round and finally gets the hand off and the penetration creates that that rotations by the Opals. Blitzav off the mark. Nurse has been quiet in this game. And a lot of individual dribbling by Canadians right now. Step back, three point shot, fight for the rebound. Nice catch by Ezzy. She goes baseline oh. and it's good. Well, the catch was spectacular, then, but the little up and under move in traffic was even better. Collie. Stop pops, but it's off the mark. And Magbegor is going to be called for the offensive foul. My question is, though, I think that was Alexander who went out and defended Ezzy Magbegor uh, at the three-point line. She shot faked, and Alexander bit on it. Yeah. Why would you bite on Ezzy at the three-point line? No disrespect yeah. to Ezzy's outdoor, outside shooting. Well, that's just a, the emotion of the situation, not understanding the scout. They would have gone through it, and that's certainly not what La Pena would have been wanting her to do. But in the heat of the moment, the desperation of the circumstances, sometimes you... Your head doesn't always kick in. And you know she's having a great game. Yeah. You want to shut her down. Kia Nurse, nowhere to go. That's going to be a five-second call. And talk about team defense. Great example. Yeah, really good. And the ball pressure, sometimes you're there and they pick it up and you're just token effort, just trying to get through it. But that time, the level of urgency, which... Sandy Brondello, coach of Australia, was talking about in that timeout earlier on. Well, since that timeout, it, it's, it's been a noticeable change in that area. Whitcomb to Ezzy. Carlton comes from behind. Good job getting a hand on the ball. And another jump ball. So both teams, a lot of hustle to start this third quarter. Ball's going to stay Canada, but there's only 1.9 seconds on the shot clock. That's right. And as he just was in a bit of a hurry, perhaps the shot clock, and as it was drop running down, just get set, get a little bit more spacing, and then rip it to the rim like she's been doing. Turnover. The nurse pushing the tempo for Canada. And as soon as Nurse picks it up, you see Madgen there all over her. Carlton, spin move, step back. What a shot. That is so pretty by Carlton. And just not in a hurry. Just was able to read the defense, assess it. And of course, to have that skill with that little step back, tough shot. And nice defense is not stolen, though. Ball out to Whitcomb, and she doesn't miss when she's open. And she doesn't. It was almost a turnover again by Whitcomb, but Magda Ball does a good job to reel that ball in and kick it back out to her. Well, the answer is Bridget Carlton for Canada. Carlton. Wickham 
Can she make it two for two? She cannot, as that ball is short. So back to Canada. There it is. This is the move we're talking about. Gets back in. That step back when you're off balance to have that body control. And there's that one that almost was turned over and just got lucky. Came back and knocks it down. Collie to Carlton, the hot hand. And again, ball stopping a lot, but Carlton just drives strong to the basket, isn't able to score, but the referee has called a foul and she'll go to the free throw line. Well, that's where it's a little frustrating for the player. It was the official on the opposite side of the court, not the one right underneath. So the underneath, we have a look, didn't call the foul. And it was the weak side ref that calls it. That's where you just get a little confused. So what? hang on a second. Yeah. So he's uh, two metres away. You're 15 metres away and you're calling the foul. Carlton goes two for two. And good second half here for her as she now has 12 points in the game. She had a slow start to the tournament, had a great game yesterday for Canada against Japan. Tolo. An easy call by the referees as I saw Amy here just hugging Tolo defensively. Yeah, really good setup, call cool play out of their horns actions, and it's designed exactly for that. And if you get caught behind that deep by Amy, she had. It's actually not a bad foul. No. <laughs> because, and it really didn't look like, compared to some of the contact we've seen, it really didn't look like there was a lot in it. Probably helped Canada, like you say. Pass a little bit too high for Tolo. Kali goes all the way. And she hustles back to try and defend Whitcomb. There's that pick and roll we talked about in the first half. Tolo not able to score. High low pass, nice help side action by Carlton who read the play perfectly. And the referees are gonna have to take a look at the shot clock here. But really Carlton came all the way from, yeah. she, she read the pass, she read Tolo's eyes that entire time. No, it's uh, you're spot on, Jackson comes in for Tolo. And you're right, I'm not sure what they're doing with the shot clock. It's showing 24 seconds right now, but that's clearly wrong. Yeah, there we go. 3.8 to get a shot off for Australia. They go inside to the GOAT. And Carlton again with a huge defensive play and Reed. Amy here loses the ball, gets it back and goes up. Shot is well off though. And now Blitzass finds Whitcomb. Whitcomb lets it fly. Gosh, she has a quick shot release. It was, and, and I think it was quicker than, she's quicker than the best of times, but that time there, it just really snatched at it. Probably had a little bit more time than she thought. And they're trying to post up Carlton. I like the idea because she does have a size advantage. Well, they didn't give it to her in the post. She says, don't worry, I'll just come outside and knock down the three. So Coach Brondello wants to talk about it as Canada now, slow start to that third quarter, but the last few possessions have really played well and they're up 49-43. Well, if it wasn't for that woman right there, Bridget Carlton, 
I'm not sure Canada would have nope. this lead 49 43 because she has been great in this third quarter just really really good shooting technique by carlton in fact you look at a lot of these ladies made the comment last night i don't know if they've got a special shooting coach for the women's team in canada but the form on these girls is outstanding i thought it was you <laughs> well I, i'd love to claim it because it's really good talbot to the goat Goodness me, in her limited minutes, she is still a baller. And it was drawn up. You heard Sandy Brondello in that last time out what they wanted to go to. Carlton shot off the front of the rim. But what I'm talking about her being a baller, I mean, she's a goat. She, she's one of the best players all time in women's basketball. At 41 years old, you mentioned it, she's been out six seven years now yeah. and came back was feeling good feeling better but at 41 to sit on the bench and basically your first substitution you go in and nail a three and you have i was going to say back to back but she didn't listen to me <laughs> it would have been a nice timing on that call for you like, it, you're right <laughs> it's hard for a 25 year old to sit on the bench come in and knock down a three nurse to carlton Field. She's been quiet. And easy basket for her. Well, if their rules are don't send them to the middle, one, you've got to do a better job of sliding your feet and taking that away, but it's got to be some weak side help. Nothing that time on the coming, on the little blow by. Talbot. Nice pass to Garvin in the corner. And you said it. Garvin had a great season shooting the three ball in the WNBL. She's been slow, not played a lot of minutes, but some big minutes here for Australia against Canada. She's big time in that little run in that second quarter. Carlton. Fields. Contested three-point shot. Wallace with the rebound. And Nurse Ooh. needs to be careful. I'm not sure it was a play on the ball. They're going to have a chat about it. To me, that meets the criteria. If you read the feeble rules to the letter of the law, that should be an unsportsmanlike. Now, whether you agree with the rule and don't agree, that's a different story. But as the rule says, that to me, she's coming from the side. She's not in a sound defensive position. She's reaching out and holding. That ticks yeah. all the boxes. Yeah, absolutely no play on the ball. Well, it is a foul going against Kia Nurse, and they're going to go and to good. the monitors to see if they'll upgrade it to that unsportsmanlike. It is, and we'll, we'll get a, hopefully get a look at it as well. But it, although it's not, there's no malice. It's not. We are reviewing any time possible upgrade to unsportsmanlike foul, right? Yep. And you go back at the moment of the contact. I don't know what they look at. The moment of the contact when the contact happens. This is obvious. Right here, that is that is a hundred percent why the ref, why the call. Oh my goodness! I don't know why they're taking so long. <laughs> So from 1 to 10, I think it's a 9 for me. Yeah. So we confirm upgrade to Unsportsman I fell. White 5 and the shooter is, can you go back? Uh, green number 3. So we heard the referees explain it to us. It is going to be upgraded to an Unsportsman like. So two free throws and the ball for Australia. And again, you can argue the merits of whether you like the rule or not, but when there's no play and the sole intent is to stop the transition, one of the great elements of basketball, then that's why that rule was introduced. And I think it's a really good rule. And I know the NBA themselves are looking at making some adjustments, maybe not to the extreme as what we saw there, but to try and take it away too, because it's a blot on the game when you just see a chance for a, transition basket taken away 
for all the reasons. Yeah, and One, it's not in the, the spirit. NBA, of, oh, yeah. You see them try and foul for no reason to just slow it down. Yeah. It's not in the spirit of the game, and it also takes away from one of the most exciting elements of the game. Yeah, the fast break transition. Talbot uses the handoff, finds Wallace, three point shot, front rim, Achamba with the rebound. Naira Fields, and that to is, me, that's an unsportsmanlike as well. And it 100%, there was no, they're not going to the video on that one. That was no. as, as, as easy a call as you're going to make. And I just question, and Naira Fields was able to make the basket, Correct. so let's not, we got distracted with the foul call. What a strong move by Naira Fields. Look at this. Foul there does everything to try and stop it. It goes in, so this is a potentially and one plus the ball. This could be a six point play. They come out and knock down a three here. But I just question, you know, I love Christy Wallace and her energy, tenacity, her toughness. That's not a smart play. No, it's not. It's, you know, you got beat. Accept it. Correct. You scream out and ask for more help, whatever it may be. Well, Fields gets her rebound, kicks it to Nurse. Nurse's three-point shot is good. Talbot, easy layup. She cannot convert though. And mistake defensively, but Talbot just not able to make that layup. Chamwa finds Kali. Kali to Alexander. She's got to let it go. She does, and she can't make the basket. So one shot for Australia. I believe they're aware. Jackson's aware. And her three-point shot cannot fall. What a quarter of basketball, Andrew. It has gone back and forth, back and forth. And at the end of three quarters, Canada now with the lead, 57 to 51 over Australia. It was really contrasting quarters, wasn't it? That was more of a reflection of what we saw in the first. And had a look at the shooting percentages, and it was a good one. Canada in that quarter had their best scoring quarter of the game at 24. They had 23 in the first. It was just that quiet one in the, in the second. And Carlton really stepping up. She's got the 15 points. Fields has got the 12. And the overplay when you've got an elite scorer like Carlton, the back door opens right up. And the way in which they were able to start to get some penetration, get some easier baskets, and then from the perimeter, they started to knock down their shots or got back on track. Ezzy Magbegor, she wasn't as predominant and effective in that third, but good hustle play to get Wickham another shot on that occasion. But there it is, that beautiful shooting stroke by Carlton. And when they needed a basket, she was able to step up and give them exactly what they were hoping to get. Yep, we saw her slow start to this tournament, only averaged about six points a game in the first two games, had a great breakout game where I think she finally saw some of her shots from the outside go in. And she came into this game tonight clearly with the confidence riding off of that game against Japan. And a great second half for her, third quarter, excuse me, second half isn't even done. It's all about defense, and in that second quarter, we saw some great defensive possessions by Australia, and that's why they were up at half. That's right, and uh, but looked like Canada found the formula, and you talk about that defense that Australia played, good hustle there. Well, Talbot almost comes up with the steal, but now Whitcomb does. Australia already had 15 turnovers in the contest. That is just way too many. And 
McBeggar, player of the game almost for Australia offensively. A great job there. Nice cut, nice pass, and finish by Tolo. Well, you hear the crowd. Uh oh. Naira Fields. So on those on-ball screens, it looks like they're trying to ice it because they're playing and taking away the middle. But when you're going to ice the ball, the, def the, big, the big's got to yeah. get back down there to offer the, the help. You can't ice, so, you know, force baseline before the big is there. Imagine, stops, shots off. Alexander Noah Chamwa comes up with the board. Well, Naira Fields, four points for her in this, uh, sorry, two points for her in this quarter. And look at the fight for the rebound as Tolo comes up with it. Nice backdoor cut, Ezzy McBegor from Sammy Whitcomb. Well, Whitcomb's putting on a show with some of her passes. She's only got five assists. I say only, that's still a, a very nice effort, but the five have all been threading the needle type passes. And Achamwa needs to be careful. Almost a five second call, I would imagine. Carlton, tough shot, but a foul is called on the jump shooter, and the fans are not happy about that call. No, they're not. Here's that play down the other end, the little slip, and Magbagor. Able to find Tolo when that double team comes, and there we see that nice backdoor cut and a little love for Ezzy as well. That little reverse made that look a little easier than <laughs> what it normally is as well. Carlton trying to silence this crowd of over 6,000 here tonight, and not sure it was the crowd or Carlton's fault, but she misses a second. Whitcomb, hesitation dribble, tough layup off the backboard. She wanted a foul as well. Had a few words to say. She might need to tone it down a little bit. Don't want to get a trigger hit happy official. Three-point shot by Collie, and what a defensive board. She was well up and above the rim on that one, Ezzy. Whitcomb. She's mad, folks. <laughs> she wanted the foul on that last play. And I love the way she's taking control and putting the game in her hands the last couple of minutes. Well, there's Tolo's brother, Adam Tolo, cheering on his sister, and he is all smiles <laughs> at the start of this fourth quarter as Australia have tied it. Let's listen in. Now you can, yes, you can run, hold, hold down. Please don't involve McGabber in the pick and roll. That's why I want you to go into the screen. That's what I'm telling you. I'm going to screen for you. You go into it. Okay. Yeah. You can call as well. Okay. We need you sometimes here. 45, regular 45. Kayla one on one. Okay? Kayla one on one, you can go. If it's so, go through the second. Guys, seven minutes, it's time, it's good. You have time to go through yours. Enjoy it. Don't you love that too? And that timeout. Yeah, we're going to go through the instructions, but just encouraging his players to enjoy the game. Have some fun. Enjoy this moment. And Whitcomb is enjoying her time <laughs> and very excited. And that was a big, big basket to knot things up at 60 all. 
You said it, big time three by Sammy Whipcomb. She is motivated, she's a little mad. I'm not sure if I wanna make Sammy Whipcomb mad. <laughs> Tess Madgen's now got the responsibility to try to guard Carlton. You suspect that she's going to be a focal part of what they do on the offensive end? Well, they have Talbot on Kia Nurse. And no dig to Madgen, but I think Talbot, you know, the taller defender, more experienced defender at this kind of level. Well, oh. what a shot out of the timeout for Kia Nurse as I was hyping up yes. the defense of Talbot. <laughs> Magbegor catches and shoots. Maybe could have taken a little bit more time yeah. or shot faked. That was perceived pressure rather than actual pressure. Felt it coming and rushed it and overcooked it. Nurse back to Carlton. Achamwa fakes the handoff, drives herself, but Mariana Tolo is there to say, not in my house. Imagine inside to Tolo, so she does it on both ends of the court, as Tolo can't make it, but will go to the free throw line. And one of the veterans of the Opals team, and just to provide that experience, and here we see her down the other end, right place, the right time. And down the other end, nice pass in there. And there you see the arms coming down and draws the foul. It's a great job by Mariona Tolo. Canada though, still up to just under six minutes to play. Collie. Kind of quiet here in the second half. Had the good first quarter. Alexander. And look at this. It's going to be a turnover. And Talbot out of nowhere finishes. And that was all started by the pressure that Sammy Whipcomb put on Shea Colley. Spot on. And got the friendly bounce too for Talbot who read it. Colley, nowhere to go. Dribbled into two defenders, and it's gonna be a jump ball, Australian ball. Talk about a game of runs. Yeah. <laughs> what We've seen good quarters, bad quarters by each team. And while well, it's coming down to the fourth quarter, five minutes left, and the game is tied. Well, it's gone to a pattern, hasn't it? The first quarter was all Canada, then it was all Australia with a 24-10 second. All Canada with Canada with 24-13 in the third, and so far it's 12-6 in, in this one. Talbot looks for Magbegor. Ooh, might have come off. Call, but you know what? Uh, Amy here has no reaction, so I think she knows it went off her. So seven seconds left on the shot clock. Ezzy just catches and drives, and she is fouled hard. And for those of you just tuning in, sorry that you haven't experienced this whole game because it has been a good one, but we know if Australia can win tonight, they will have booked themselves a spot in that quarterfinals. If Canada wins, more than likely, or actually it's guaranteed, they will have finished top one or two. With the loss, kind of all up in the air. We might have to wait and see what happens tomorrow, which is the last day of group phase. And this group is so strong that, you know, a, a top team in the world is gonna miss out on that quarterfinals. Carlton, big third quarter, misses that, gets her own rebound. Nowhere to go though, one of those, you get your rebound, dribble out of it, or kick it out. Talbot oh. 
Oh, goodness me! And Australia now with a four-point lead. Wanna get away with a little double dribble. But still... Not sure she had control of the first dribble, though. Well, Ezzy almost came up with a steal, but Fields is off, and Alexander skies for the offensive rebound. A junk ball is going to go to Canada. Jump ball situation, possession arrow to Canada. This is the one you were talking about, Carlton in traffic. Nil advised shot, three bodies around her, and here it is. Little bounce, pick it up, and then another bounce. <laughs> Nice back screen. Oh, Alexander was open for a split second. Carlton is off. Amy here, there for the offensive rebound, though. You know what? I'm going to call it a pass from Carlton to Amy here. Well, that's generous. <laughs> Bottom line is it's effective. Sammy. Sammy. Oh. Sammy for three. Holly finds Alexander. Her two-point shot rolls in. So Canada desperately needed that basket. They did, they did and Tolo did the right thing and went really deep because she needed some help and good, smart kick-out pass for that little mid-range jumper. And nice block by Amy here. A fight for the ball because every ball counts. Imagine to Tolo, nice pass. Oh, Tolo just can't convert, but tips the ball back out. Fresh 14. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> Amy here says, get that out of here. And that's an air ball. So missed opportunities oh. by Australia. The desperation of both these teams is something special. Have a look at the block, the athleticism. And just the desperation to play before that by Magbegort diving on the floor. No self-restraint or concern <laughs> about injury. And just all out there for both these teams. This is the World Cup, Andrew. There is no self-constraint. Let's listen in. I'm sure there's some people at home might be uh, wondering why would he, when you're three down with two, a little over two and a half to go, why do you want to use the 24 second shot clock the entire time? Because there are two things in play. One is he wants to try and get it down and get a good shot. The other thing is he's concerned about the margins. The margins here, and, and if it goes the other way, as long as Australia doesn't win by more than 14, and provided Canada beat Mali tomorrow, then even if they lose this game, they're going to make it. But if yeah. they lose and lose by more than 14, it's a three-way tie. They could actually miss out on the top uh, three. Oh, yep. Well, you saw those stats during the timeout. It has been a block party here at the Sydney Superdome. <laughs> and definitely some of those blocks we're going to see on the highlight reel as Fields finds Collie. collie has been quiet. Unfortunately, that shot is off the front but ball will stay Canada. See, 14 seconds, he's yelling it out again. He wants nothing early. Doesn't want to give any momentum for Australia to push this out to that plus 14. Nurse. Oh, no. And Tolo 
is going to be called for the shooting foul. In my opinion, it was a foul because she didn't let Nurse land. And Nurse didn't jump forward. She actually jumped sideways. Yeah. It's a good call. And for me, this is one of those, let's take a look. No doubt. Absolutely. She didn't let her land. And it's yeah. one of those kind of scary fouls yeah, as it is. well. Uh, no, no, I know they changed the rule about your landing space and all that, but I don't care what era you played the game in and with the rules or whatever they are, that's a foul under any circumstances. So Kia Nurse brings Canada back to just down one. And Whipcomb, who's had a great second half, in my opinion, drives, gets the contact, and it's going to go to the free throw line. Now, there's no doubt she's been the most influential, along with Ezzy Magbagor. Those two collectively, 16 for Magdebor and 14 to Whitcomb. And it's not just the points, it's the defense, it's the hustle, it's the boards, it's the energy they've brought. And I think... Steph Talbot is another one who's been a little bit of an unsung hero in this one. She's got the seven boards, eight assists to go along with her seven points. Oh, a little long. And a rare miss, honestly, by Sammy Whipcomb at the free throw line. Well, that one rolls in. So you hear Victor LaPena, we've got time, and you mentioned it. They lose, they don't want to lose by a lot. Australia, with the win, will have booked their ticket to the quarterfinals, and what a block by Ezzy Magbagor, but they get the ball back, Naira Fields, and a fight for the rebound. Unfortunately, oh. Ezzy cannot just hold on to it. Ezzy is everywhere and playing as she should, as if her life depends on it. Every play, the weak side help, great rim protection, good hands. Arne, it's Australia not capable of coming up with it and here out of position, but still with the hustle, just throwing everything at it to try and come up with that possession. I mean, they know what is on the line and both these teams play tomorrow. <laughs> Nurse drives, tough shot. Alexander tried to tip it in, and Magbogor with the rebound. So now Magin oh. picks the ball up. They got to get it over. Just. They do. Well, not sure what the captain, <laughs> Tess Magin, was thinking, but Wickham to Tolo. And Tolo cannot score, but what about that offensive rebound by Steph Talbot? And you said it, we're seeing it on the defensive end by Australia. We're seeing it on the offensive end. Boy, are they just throwing their bodies because they know what's on the line. And right now, I have a feeling Australia just wanted that little bit more. It is, and it's easy when you got 9,000 or so fans, a vast majority of them getting behind the team. It creates that little extra spark, a bit more emotion into it for them. Whitcomb. Tolo. Backdoor cut, Steph, Steph, Talbot. One of the biggest baskets of this tournament by that woman right there. And what about the pass as well? Well, Canada, they need some scores and they need some scores early. Fields. And I think Whitcomb might have got away with one there. That's right, Australia got fouls to give. They've only got the two team fouls in this quarter. I want to foul the shooter, of course. So six seconds left. Coach LaPena does have one more timeout left, but doesn't want to use it. Achanwa 
Nice defense and another block by Ezzy Magbagor. And a foul is going to be called against Shea Colley. <laughs> Magbagor has been inspirational at both ends of the floor. Let's not forget they're doing it without their leading scorer and Beck Allen, who has a rib injury, unable to play. Well, there she is on the bench, uh, averaging three or 13 points a game, a little bit over. We were worried. I was worried about who was going to step up. And a lot of people have stepped up tonight for the Opals. So now Coach LaPena is going to use his last timeout. And a couple of big free throws that time by Steph Talbot, who in last season in the, with the Seattle in the WNBA only averaged 58% from the free throw line. So able to knock both of those down under a, a pressure situation. Always a little easier to make them when you're four up than when you're four down, but still. <laughs> So, Steph Talbot, what a game tonight. 11 points, 8 assists, and 9 rebounds. She oh. is triple-double. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Uh, she, she's tiptoeing on a triple-double. That's incredible. No, and, and she has really led the way the last two games. She was spectacular on the defensive end last night against Serbia, and she's backed it up again tonight. So Canada wanting to take the ball out on this end of the clock because they actually want to use the shot clock right now. Mm -hmm. They're going for point spread yep. instead of the win, basically. That's exactly right. They've conceded the, the loss, but now thinking of the bigger picture. And it's strategy. It's what we have to do. Oh! Ira Fields. Well, a great job by her. And, you know, these two teams might be the two teams competing for first and second in group play, depending on what happens tomorrow with France. Uh, just a, a quick uh, update about who is playing who tomorrow. We know Canada is playing Mali tomorrow, and Australia have to go up against Japan. Oh, sorry, no timeout. No, what have they done is they just wanted to check the, whether the clock oh, stopped. Okay. And that's why, so they can't advance the ball here if it hasn't been a timeout. And Serbia against France. So if France beats Serbia. Well, they're checking the three. And from that angle, a little hat, is there a tippy top? No, I think she's behind the line. That to me is behind the line, that yeah. right foot, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, you can, you ah, can look see at the that. court. Look at the toys we get to play with. <laughs> Very nicely done by. You didn't have that back in your the day. The people in the truck. Ah, oh, no, they just. Not used really it. in my day. Either, no, don't worry. We weren't allowed to do reviews back then. <laughs> we didn't have TVs like this. No. Well, they might have had it. Might have been black and white. Well, it is a three-point play. Australia still up three, and. The referees are still talking. So it is now an Australia timeout, I believe. Well, if it is, and, that, and people are like, again, people at home are thinking, why just throw the ball in bounds? It's only one second, but Australia are going to try and score on this. Let's get over. You still get good screens. No illegal screens from in here, okay? So coming in, you'll be screening right there, Tolo. Colin, if she's open, you can give it 
to her. Sammy's coming immediately after. She's open, give it to her, but be careful here. Tolo, come straight back out. One of you are open, and if you can't get it, you've just got to throw it in. I mean, go throw it at someone's legs. You're in, Mount. Got it on. So just quickly, I was trying to explain, if France wins tomorrow, they play Serbia mm -hmm. at 5.30 local time. That's right. It will be a three-way tie That's right. with Canada, Australia, and France, each with three wins. So it's going to come down to who won against who and by how much. Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to be... And uh, right now, like France had, what was it, a 14-point win over they did, Australia? yes. Well, they get it in. And they're going to let it run out. So, what a win. And it, I would consider it a comeback win for Australia here tonight. Absolutely phenomenal. Canada, 72. Australia, 75. One of the better games we've seen in the tournament so far. Real high intensity, high quality played in really good spirits with so much at stake and Canada really haven't hurt themselves with this loss given the work that they've already done so far provided of course they can beat Mali who look like they've got some problems internally but this Australian team they desperately needed this win and provided they can come out and get their win tomorrow against Japan and they'd be Certainly, I think barracking pretty hard for Serbia and to let's, beat France. Yeah. Let's not forget that Australia won tonight against Canada, the number one team in group play before this game was happening, without their top scorer, Beck Allen. Talk it, about a gutsy win. It is, and uh, they've they got to make adjustments on the fly, such as to tournament play. Beck Allen there leading scorer in the first three games and they were able to find a way to get it done and uh, it, it was come from different sources but Samantha Sammy Whitcomb was special with her 15 points because when they were down she took the game in her own hands and was creating shots for herself off the dribble and some of her passing was just extraordinary and Ezzy Magbagor was sensational. 16.7 rebounds but that, and five block shots. That rim protection that she offered was something really, really special. And full credit to Canada. They played hard. Fields with the 17 points was tough. And Carlton with the 16, but only five of 13. And that's one of Carlton's two. They started to overplay coming off that 19-point game yesterday but if i'm not mistaken carlton had 16 at the end of the third well that's right so australia did a really good job of excellent job in that fourth period the fourth yes of locking her up and making it difficult she is elite and here's why she's elite she can do that with a step back but she can also knock it down from the three-point line and that was one of those Lucky plays, tough pass. Ezzy does a good job. And they're the little hustle plays that they get. And that's what I'm talking about, Carlton. She can beat you in so many different ways. And... Well, for me, we're looking at scoring highlights. But what a game as far as defensive block goes. Not something you really see a lot in the women's game. But six block shots for Canada. Three of those being rewarded to Leticia Ami here. And talk about Ezzy Magbigor. Five huge blocks. And the team ended up with nine. That's absolutely incredible. It, it does. And it's not just the blocks. When you've got a shot blocker like that, it's also the rim protection and the other ones where they might get the shot up. But it's the intimidation because they know she's lurking around. And as we said, just a... Really a world-class game by some amazing athletes. And look at the plays. Real physical, the way the umpires, are, the referees are officiating it. And just an outstanding World Cup battle where both teams representing their country as their country would want to be represented. Well, it has been an amazing tournament. And tonight, 
it has been the same. So there you see the results of today. Group B, Serbia over Mali, France over Japan, and Australia with a big three-point win over Canada, 75-72. And so here are the standings. Canada in first mm. with three and one. France, three and one. Australia, three and one. Serbia, two and two. They're going to have to look and see what happens with the points for and against moving on. So it'll be interesting. Thank you very much for tuning in. What a game here from the Sydney Superdome. From Shona and Andrew, we were excited you joined in. Good night.